While we wait for other radios to battle it out on the FT8 Battle Royale, I have another project I've been wanting to work on. And this all started because my ADS-B receiver acted up on me over winter. I took it down and replaced the SDR on it, thinking it was the SDR going bad. Turned out to be something else, but it did give me an insight that the SDR that I was using wasn't quite the best for the job. So I'm gonna make a series. This is at least one of probably three, maybe four videos comparing SDRs and filters for the use on ADS-B. So in this series, we're gonna compare at the very least the FlightAware Blue Stick, the ADS-B Exchange Orange Stick, and the new Alec Smart SDR V4. In addition to that, I'm gonna throw into the mix uh, after we gather initial information with and without filters. This is the ADS-B Exchange 1090 filter. And for kicks, I may even throw the SDR that I removed from my ADS-B receiver, my home permanent ADS-B receiver into the mix just to see how it does in comparison to the rest of the ones that I have on the bench right now. So come along, I'm gonna walk you through the setup. This is very similar to the setup that I made for the radio comparisons so that you can see that I'm making this as fair as possible for each SDR. And at the end of this, we will see which SDR we should be using to gain the best reception for our ADS-B receivers. So here's my setup. I have everything in a weather box. I have a battery that's 20,000 milliamp hours, a Raspberry Pi 4, a Raspberry Pi 4. They're the same setup physically, and I used the same image, meaning I built an image, and then I duplicated it and put it in the other Raspberry Pi so that we have the same exact software running exactly the same way. The SDR is connected in the top USB 3 port. The SDR is connected in the top USB 3 port. And they're being fed from the same antenna on a T. The idea is we're going to get the same exact signal on both sides. These lengths of feed line came from the same bag on the same batch, etc., etc., etc. This is as heads up as it can get. So I'm going to power them up to get their IP addresses and get them set up in virtual radar, which is what I'm going to use to gather statistics and compare them to each other. And then I will reset everything and start the test properly on everything on an even keel once I have this puppy set up outside. All right, the box with the receivers is outside and getting a clear view of the sky. Start virtual radar. The IP address ending 23 is one receiver. The other one is uh, 26 is the other receiver. And dot three is the one that I keep at home all the time doing its thing. I'm gonna use that one as a baseline for what we should be getting. Granted that that one has an antenna that is much higher in the sky and has, and has a better view of the sky. So I expect that one to receive a lot more, but right out of the gate, we can see that on one receiver we're getting 69 aircraft and 53 with positions and the other one 75 and 50 and 60 with positions and there's a difference in the rate of messaging already so 310 versus 250 or 240 so there's clearly already something of a of a horse race here i'm going to wait until the battery dies and once the battery dies in a day or so i will come back to this and we will see what we have so we are a couple of days into this, and as you can see, 23 and 26 are no longer reporting in because I just unplugged them. I'm gonna plug the statistics, uh, all the information from these statistics onto a spreadsheet, and then I'm going to add a filter to the orange stick to make it a closer head-to-head -head comparison because the FlightAware blue stick has a built-in 1090 filter and the ADS-B Exchange orange stick does not. I was gonna make that in separate videos, but I'm just gonna combine it on this one just because it makes sense. While I have the setup open to add the filter to ADS-B Exchange orange receiver, uh, also quick update, and that is that I put a power brick inside of the box instead of the battery. I tried running the battery and the draw of these two units is more than I had calculated and not by a little. Uh, I can't seem to find my USB power analyzer so I don't know the exact draw right now but ultimately in order to run these for multiple days or at least a day without a break 
I went ahead and drilled a hole in the in the case and even though I don't have a grommet for it uh, I'm just using uh, the speedy method of, of sealing a hole and that's duct tape you know duct tape fixes everything I'm gonna add the 1090 filter to the ADSB exchange orange stick and then run this test again for another couple of days and see what the difference on the numbers is all right gang so here we are the battle number one is over let's take a look at some numbers and see what we have so for starters i'm going to name these things adsb test one and adsb test two you'll see that up there let's look at some numbers without the filter just the the sticks as they come from the store adsb test one got 65 million nine hundred ninety nine some odd messages over the course of that i ran the test I couldn't run the test exactly the same amount of time. Life gets in the way, but they were both running at the same time. So this is a heads to heads comparison. ADSB test two got 64,480,000 or so con uh, messages, making ADSB test number one 101% better than ADSB test two. Now, then I stopped the test and started all over again with adding the filter. So let's see how that affected things. ADSB test one got 27,984,000 messages and ADSB test two got 38,209,000 messages. Now that is a massive difference. I expected a difference, but I expected a difference in, the, in a different way. Why would you ask that, right? So that makes uh, ADSB test two by itself 136% or 36% better, I should say, than ADSB test one. And where the difference is at is the here. As you can see, ADSB test one for this test was the ADSB exchange orange stick without the built-in filter. And then the flight aware blue, which has a built-in 1090 filter. I expected on test one for the flight aware stick to win because it, it has a built-in filter for the frequency we're looking at. However, when I added the filter to ADS-B uh, X orange, I expected it to win because this filters before the amplifier because uh, e each one of these uh, SDRs has a, a small preamp in them. At least that's my understanding based on what I've read. And I expected the, this filter being on on the before the preamp would filter the content better and then the ADSB exchange orange would win the results are exactly the opposite of what I expected how about you that's battle royale number one done I gotta tell you this was a very difficult learning process for me because I was relying on the Wi-Fi and the Wi-Fi would disconnect so I ended up having to run cat six runs to the front deck of my house to run this test on this box and not depend on the Wi-Fi so that I wouldn't lose packets. Additional to that, it's winter in Indiana and I never expected this, but we lost power a lot over the course of the last four weeks. This video has been in the making for four weeks, folks. And basically between losing power and troubleshooting issues with connectivity and life, because, you know, I do have one. It doesn't seem like it at times. Uh, it took a long time to battle this out. However, the next videos should come a little, little bit faster because I have, think I've worked out all the problems. Next Battle Royale will be the new Elec NESDR uh, Smart V4 with, uh, I'm gonna pin this uh, against itself with and without a 1090 filter. From there, we'll figure out which one is the winner and we'll pin it against these two for a bracketed setup. I mean, we are in March, right? I'm not gonna say the name, but you guys know what I'm talking about. And I will add the rest of the SDRs that I have into the mix the same way. The subscriptions are free down there. Thanks to my patrons on Patreon. I really appreciate you all helping me with this. We'll catch you on the next one, 7-3.